I know with your podcast, uh, you had someone called Christo on, which is something I'm quite fond of um, in the ways of marketing. Whenever I have a question about marketing, I go and look at his stuff and then I have my answer and a bit more, actually, I feel fully equipped. So how do you go about getting that caliber person on your podcast? Do you want the short version or the the full template? Give me, uh, I guess, give us the full template. Fuck it, we we have time. <laughs> we might need a whole ten hours for the entire <laughs> okay. template. But the thing is, there's a misconception that can some someone can start, let's say, a marketing podcast and just reach out to Chris Doe on day one and get the yes. They actually might. You made me sound cooler than I am. I'm no guru. If you want true advice, you could go just turn me off and go listen to Christo. No, don't do that. But, <laughs> like, I'm learning every single day, and you have to start somewhere. So you – so baseline. We're, we're going to give you the full template. So plus, minus, equals – I learned this from James Altucher, a mentor of mine, brilliant podcaster. But a plus is a mentor. A minus is a mentee, a client, an audience member, and equals is a peer. If you have too much of any of those, you want to balance. If you have all equals, you're just in a social club. So who in your business is your pluses, your mentors, the people you learn from, the Chris Does? Who are your minuses, your audience, the clients, the people you're serving, and who is the peer-to-peer? -peer? Like us, you know, Mike, Mads, Ben. We're peer-to-peer, -peer networking, creating content together. So we need to understand who those people are in the specific industry and audience we're trying to serve. So what are we trying to accomplish here? And we're talking about a podcast, me getting Chris Doe on a podcast. So in the podcasting world, it's who's our audience, who are we going to serve, a lot of the pluses, our mentors are our guests. We bring on peers. We also might even bring on prospects and clients, or we might bring on current clients as case studies. But who, who are they? What do they hang out? What do they do? We want to be the center of their gravity. So if you have a marketing podcast, it's fair to assume you're going to attract other marketers. If you do what I did, a Rochester, New York business podcast, it was fair to assume I was going to, you know, Talk to Rochester, New York business owners. My pluses were the, my guests who I was learning from, but they were magically also minuses because they were guests, they were mentors, but many became clients, and a lot of them became peers and friends. So what's your niche? Who are you trying to serve? Who are the mentors, the peers, and the audiences in that group? And then you start something that didn't exist before you and become the center of gravity for those kinds of people. So that's the general framework. It's going to look different for every individual person. Then let's say you do that in the podcasting world. You need to get some proof of concept. Now, if you already know a Chris Doe, if you already know a big name person, maybe they're willing to put their chips on you and be your first guest, and that's kick butt because I'll explain how you'll use it. You can ultimately get bigger guests as soon as you get Chris Doe. So if you, if you know any celebrities, that's easy, but a lot of us don't. You need to create a proof of concept. You want to get a lot of episodes under your bow. You want consistency. You don't need to have a massive audience, but you need to at least be able to explain to someone who your audience is. Um, the better metrics you have, you can use those, but you don't really need to use them too much because people are looking for audience type. So if you understand who your audience is and how they, who they are, you can easily explain that to somebody. But what I do at the core, after you have a foundational podcast, you have systems, you have proof, I use my previous guests as opportunities to get new guests. So there's kind of an A, B here. One, I like to ask that, or we'll do A. I said A, B here, then I said one. A, I ask my guests for nominations. So if Mike is a brilliant business owner, he's going to know other brilliant business owners. So I ask for nominations, and I use the word nomination intentionally because who doesn't want to be nominated? 
and who <clears throat> doesn't want to nominate somebody. So I get as many introductions as possible. B, I name drop, which is just a term for using Mads or Mike in my pitch, in my sentence. I name drop previous guests when reaching out to current guests. So the food chain of guests is very complicated, but Eric Sue was on my podcast. He co-hosts a marketing show with uh, Neil Patel, Marketing School. Eric Sue was on my podcast. Chris Doe never replied to my message, but I saw that Chris was on Eric's show, and it came out the exact same week Eric came out on my show. So I reached out. I was like, wow, Chris, you literally come up everywhere I go. I was just had Eric Sue on my podcast, and I saw and watched you on his podcast, so I thought I'd you know check back in and see if this might be of value to you. So it was following up, but it was name dropping Eric Sue. Um, Jasmine Alec is one of the biggest LinkedIn content creators. The way he I got him on my show was name dropping Chris Doe, and the tactical behind the scenes is I'll look at who they're following, who they're engaging with, if they're a content creator, who are they collaborating with. And if I know that Eric and Chris know each other, I can use Eric's name and Chris isn't going to be like, who's that? I know that they know each other. The second main aspect, and then I'll shut up, is I never let a good opportunity go to waste. So every time I listen to a podcast, I reach out to the host and I reach out to the guest. I don't want to be a stalker, so I don't reach out to the host every episode. YouTube, I, every time I subscribe, I'll reach out to the, the YouTube creator. Don't do it every time because I don't want to be a stalker, but we'll use Chris Doe as an example. If you listen to his podcast, the future podcast, I think it was something like that, uh, you can reach out to every one of his guests. And it's not to pitch anything. It's to say, hey, Mads, I love the episode with Chris. I list a takeaway. Um, congrats on your success. Here to support you. And you start a conversation. And it's really those two main things. It's n reaching out as much as possible, planting as many seeds as possible, uh, building as many relationships and friends as possible. A lot of hosts don't get reached out to. A lot of guests don't get reached out to. So you stand out pretty easily in that regard so it's reaching out never letting a good opportunity go to waste and then it's name dropping previous guests to level up to new guests or getting nominations from them to get better and better guests as you go but none of it's possible if you don't have clarity on the podcast purpose you don't have a foundation you don't have foundation proof of concept and you're not patient enough to see it through so Believe it or not, that's like only part of the template because we can get into follow-up marketing, communication skills. We can get into the exact words in the pitch, but it's social proof at play is at the core of it. Social proof at play, and it's planting as many seeds as possible. Is that helpful? Is or it was? We just did a whole podcast. I need to shut up. <laughs>